Saudi so this is um, I will keep the video on in case of any problems, just please let me know. I'll try to, to switch off the video or something. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the topic of this of this presentation is nucleosynthesis in short gamma ray burst engines. My name is Agnieszka Janiuk and um, I work in Center for Theoretical Physics in Warsaw and I'm here in Warsaw. So I say good morning or good afternoon to those of you who are in a different time zone like me. It's already quite late afternoon. And I'd like, uh, first of all, to thank very much to the organizers for the uh, invitation and um, meeting you in such circumstances is um, anyway, great uh, um, experience. Uh, so just briefly about my institute, I hope uh, you can see the next slide now. Uh, this is the photo of our building. This is Center for Theoretical Physics uh, is located uh, in the Institute of Physics in Warsaw. This is a big campus, but we are theoretical division, so we share only uh, quite a few, small number of rooms on the third floor on this building. And so we are hoping to get a new location soon, but at the moment we are here. We are also a member of the doctoral school um, because as a research institute, we do not lead um, undergraduate studies. We have only graduate students and they are members of this GeoPlanet School, which is interdisciplinary between um, institutes of physics, astronomy, and um, geophysics, uh, and oceanology as well. So I'm uh, in charge of the part of physics here. And uh, I have a small group of my own students uh, here, and uh, the topics of our research uh, are related to the computational astrophysics and, and theory of accretion onto black holes. In general, uh, we study different sources where accretion is important, starting from the persistent sources, uh, AGN and, and X-ray binaries, down to the um, um, transient and very um, short explosive events like the gamma ray bursts. Uh, we study formations of the Kerr black holes uh, during stars collapse with numerical simulations. And we study gamma ray bursts uh, in the context of the jets. Uh, and uh, finally, the nucleosynthesis in the post-merger outflows from the accretion disks. Mm. So uh, the to topic of today is the gamma ray bursts, as we heard uh, from Sri Piran already this morning. Uh, the gamma ray bursts are, are very um, powerful energetic events that, uh, that I um, observed because of the collimated relativistic outflows are pushing through the interstellar medium from very large distances um, from extra uh, galactic cosmological distances. Uh, this gives us information about uh, the power uh, of, of um, energy uh, released in this uh, explosion. Uh, this must be very high. Um, so uh, they are um, presumably powered by a central engine. This can be a, a black hole of a um, kind of a stellar mass surrounded by some remnant matter and the power of accretion is uh, typically considered as sufficient to power the central engines. Uh, I divided my talk today into two parts. Um, the first part will be a little bit historical and pedagogical um, uh, information about uh, the problem of the microphysics in these uh, accretion disks because for you maybe it is uh, very well known but for people who um, are considering accretion in, in the active galaxies or in the, in the um, X-ray binaries, uh, they do not know much about uh, this uh, problem and the, the microphysics is, is completely ignored. Uh, so here um, we have a, a specific model uh, from um, 1990s uh, that was based on the, on the um, Standard equations of physics, basic equations are those of hydrodynamics, they are continuity energy equation and conservation of momentum. The, these are sufficient to build a successful model, either steady state or time dependent model of the accretion disk with the uh, famous uh, viscosity prescription given by alpha parameter where the stress uh, scales with the pressure um, and proposed in 70s by Shakura and Sunyaev. Uh, but uh, later on, it occurred to be insufficient for the description of the GRB engine because, first of all, of the microphysics, 
and uh, the equation of state um, where not only uh, ionized hydrogen uh, is um, important. And uh, finally, uh, going to the MHD turbulences and transport, people started building um, more advanced models. Uh, so in this first part, I will describe the hyper accretion and microphysics uh, in uh, such a simple one-dimensional context of the, of the accretion disk, which I studied from, from the years uh, 2004. And uh, not only I, but a large group of people, different, uh, different groups were involved in such a studies. And um, in the last part of this talk, uh, I will show you my recent efforts and, and uh, the simulations uh, with much more advanced code um, of uh, general relativistic MHD, which is a code HARM. Um, so what is hyperaccretion? Hyperaccretion is a, a term that um, uh, Mm, describes uh, the accretion process uh, but highlighting the rate uh, of this accretion to be very, very large. Uh, this is of the order of solar mass per second. Specific value is probably more tricky to constrain, but anyway, this is a solar mass per second in comparison to um, solar um, mass per year. Uh, it's really very high. Uh, the plasma here is composed uh, of the uh, ions and uh, heavy um, um, accretion rate, uh, very, very high accretion rate implies very high densities and high uh, temperatures. That's why these um, um, species are free. Uh, neutrons, protons, electrons, and positron pairs are also uh, present. And nuclear reactions are occurring in, uh, in this plasma. Uh, and these reactions produce also neutrinos which can be absorbed and scattered uh, in the medium. Uh, so as I said, the temperatures are very high. So these are on the order 10 to 10, 10 to 11 Kelvin densities uh, are below the neutron star density, but still they are very large, uh, higher than typically 10 to 10 grams per centimeter cube, at least at the start of the accretion process. Then uh, they will gradually drop um, as, as the accretion proceeds and the engine um, is getting empty. Uh, the main reactions that produce here neutrinos under such uh, densities and temperatures uh, are the electron and positron capture on nucleons, neutron decay, uh, and between these reactions, uh, nuclear equilibrium uh, is established. Uh, the rates uh, I will show in the next slide, the, the formula for them were derived uh, in, the, in the works uh, by Latimer and collaborators. There are other reactions important here as well uh, and considered also by people to, to construct the uh, equation of state. Uh, these are plasma decay, electron-positron pair annihilation, and also Bremsstrahlung. So nucleon, nucleon, Bremsstrahlung can produce uh, neutrinos. Uh, there is a neutrino transport problem and neutrino cooling rates or, or leakage schemes are recently involved. What I have here is very simple the most simple uh, prescription for the neutrino cooling. Uh, so here, the emissivity is computed either in the optically thick or optically thin regime. Uh, the, the plasma actually can be optically opaque to neutrinos. Uh, it was shown uh, on, on Wednesday in the talk by Ariadna. So uh, really, in the, in the most densest parts, the neutrinos can be absorbed and scattered and even uh, contribute to the pressure term uh, given here in the bottom of this slide. Mm. I was using uh, in my codes uh, the opacities uh, computed from the two-stream approximation given by Tiziana, Tiziana Di Matteo 2002. This is working approximation and, and um, the, the most simple that we can use. Of course, more advanced methods are used now, uh, for instance, the, the leakage schemes. Um, then um, the equation of state. Uh, the contribution to the pressure is by the free nuclei and electron-positron pairs. Also helium uh, can be synthesized here in the outskirts of this disk. I will show the, the figure um, in the next slides uh, where it is uh, synthesized. Um, radiation and neutrino pressure can be of some, some importance, but typically they are much lower um, uh, orders of magnitude. Uh, so th this is a Fermi gas in principle. Um, with the nuclear nucleon pressure uh, contributed by the electrons, positrons, nucleons, and, and protons, 
because um, this um, fermionic uh, gas uh, has to obey the Pauli exclusion uh, principle. And uh, hence, uh, we are computing not the ideal gas uh, pressure in general, but we contribute, we compute the, the pressure uh, given by the Fermi Dirac integral here of the order um, 3 over half and 5 over half. Here, the, uh, the beta is the um, kT over mc square. Uh, this is the, the uh, Planck constant here and, and physical uh, speed of light. Uh, so uh, these, are, these are computed numerically. And uh, also number densities of these fermions uh, under arbitrary degeneracy can be computed. And these are determined here by this formula uh, in, the, uh, in the bottom of the, of the page. Here you have the rates. Uh, they, they look uh, horrible, but um, in fact, th these are uh, three reactions here. If you look uh, more carefully, there is arrow uh, right or arrow left. So these are reactions back and forth, uh, producing neutrinos or the uh, absorbing neutrinos. Um, uh, and uh, here these are uh, integrals over the distribution functions of, of, of the species. Um, the M, large M, is the average transition uh, rate that comes from the uh, weak interaction Caplic constant and, uh, and is given by mm, the, the most recent data from the, uh, from the nuclear physics uh, uh, people. And uh, the factor BE here, this is denoted, it reflects the percentage of the partially trapped neutrinos. So this is the blocking factor for neutrinos used here. It can be between zero and, and one. The reactions have to balance each other, yes? So this is the number density of protons versus number density of neutrons. And uh, uh, reactions which consume uh, protons have to be balanced by this which produce them. And uh, we, uh, from this, this kind of balance, we just compute the uh, electron fraction. Uh, the electron fraction is calculated as the net number of electrons per baryon. Mm, it is shown here on the plot. This is the result from this 1D alpha disk simulation that, uh, that I made 2014, so quite a long time ago. But the parameter here that sets the physics um, conditions is the accretion rate. Uh, I have uh, mm, plotted two examples here, the accretion rate 0, 1 solar mass per second and 1 solar mass per second. And you see that in the large part of this disk, this is log scale of the radius uh, um, up to 1,000 uh, gravitational radius, this uh, electron fraction is pretty low under such conditions. So this is uh, even below 0, 2. And uh, above 100 Eg, you see here something happens. So this is the, the place where helium uh, is being synthesized. Uh, so these uh, electrons are also then um, in, in the helium nuclei. Okay, what about nucleosynthesis? I, I use it, these models for uh, different purposes. Also, I think it's, it's kind of useful actually to, to go back to these one-dimensional models for pedagogical reasons to, to teach students uh, how, how the physics looks. In, in quite simple simulation that is possible to be done on the laptop. Um, but uh, also it's interesting from the point of view of problem of nucleus or synthesis in this accretion disk. Uh, because uh, what we know from the history of physics, this is a seminal work by uh, Barbage, Barbage, Fowler and Hoyle from um, 1975. It's, it's been uh, over, over um, 60 years now, the anniversary of, the, of this work. They showed uh, greatly that stars produce uh, um, heavy, um, well, um, produce helium and uh, carbon oxygen in the fusion. Uh, the, the elements uh, up to iron and nickel are produced. Then, of course, uh, supernova are the source of the as process elements, and uh, from, um, from starting from these uh, elements synthesized inside the star, we can get uh, heavier elements in the explosion of the supernova. Then the R process is needed to explain the uh, fast, uh, the, the heaviest elements uh, produced in the fast streams uh, of neutrons. So you see here these uh, chains uh, on, the, on the diagram of this um, number of neutrons versus number of protons in a nucleus. Each nucleus is represented here on such a um, stability line. Yes, these are the, the elements, uh, the, the, um, the isotopes uh, synthesized uh, or, or produced by uh, two different parts, S process and R process. So you see 
uh, from this textbook um, figure that heavier uh, elements are only possible here on the top right of this, of this graph uh, by the R process path. Uh, is it possible then to apply such, um, uh, uh, such idea to accretion disk? This was curious for me because I'm, I'm a accretion disk person. I was not working on stars before, uh, so, so I, I just wanted to see if the nuclear synthesis can happen in the accretion disk. And first I started from this nuclear statistical equilibrium. Um, there is a method um, well um, uh, established and uh, available to use this code for post-processing I've taken from the Bradley Mayer um, webnuclear.org website and, and he provides quite a nice uh, toolkit for it. And uh, this is the, the post-processing result of my one-dimensional simulation of the um, steady state accretion disk, uh, alpha disk simulation. So, so here you see how these uh, species are distributed inside the disk. So of course, as I said, you have in the innermost part only the free protons and neutrons as before, then this helium is um, forming, uh, yes, around 100. Uh, gravitational radii, it's, it's a peak, so the mass fraction is, is dominated by the helium, but then you are having um, more and more heavier isotopes synthesized, but of course only until uh, nickel, because it is an um, thing. Uh, heavier elements than, than, than nickel, of course, are produced uh, in the universe, and we see this uh, here, yes, we see this uh, nickel Mm, is the is the, the abundant the last abundant element that can be produced under NSA conditions? But then these neutron captures produce all the family of much heavier uh, isotopes uh, with with much larger uh, mass numbers. Mm. Uh, here you see the graph how how the um, mm, R process and rapid neutron capture uh, looks like from the point of view of a single. Um, nucleus, so it has to be um, put into a bath of uh, neutrons uh, uh, with um, large uh, number density, and these neutrons are, are uh, attacking our our nucleons. Uh, there is uh, unstable neutron heavy nucleus first at, at the intermediate stage, and then there is a beta decay, uh, and the nucleus goes to the value of stability mm, mm, back on the on the mm, on the line of this um, of this R process. And uh, what is what is important is this YE. Yes, this is the, the electron fraction condition. How can we form heavier and heavier elements under which conditions? Uh, so this figure also shows you what, what is being produced um, and uh, these characteristic peaks may be seen better here than in the in this uh, in the solar abundance plot. Uh, so you see mm, here uh, much uh, more pronounced uh, peaks of the uh, first, second, and third uh, R process um, um, operation. And the first peak can be produced if the electron fraction is uh, uh, not so small has to be a, a larger than about 0 0.25. Then the second peak and the lanthanide family uh, of isotopes can be produced on the, only under a much smaller electron fraction value, 0 0.15, 0 0.25. And the third peak requires uh, the electron fraction to be even smaller. And here only uh, the actinides can be, um, can be traced. Okay, so to, to do this, um, I um, implemented the, the harm code. So you are all very familiar with the harm code. Here I, I had a very uh, beautiful lecture on Wednesday by Scott Noble, so he's one of the authors of this, of this scheme. Um, so I don't need to explain uh, to you, the code provides a solver for this continuity and energy momentum conservation equations, but now in general relativity. So, so it's all under the three plus one, the composition of the space time and the volts, um, uh, the, the matter together with magnetic fields uh, under the fixed pair background metric. And there is the energy tensor that contains uh, these uh, two terms, um, the gas and the electromagnetic part, the flow uh, is magnetized and um, the equation of state in this basic version of the code that is available to download from the 
uh, first I started with this version from Charles Gami, uh, 2003. This provides the uh, equation of state of a um, ideal gas. Here, the gamma is the adiabatic index. Mm. So what is, what is needed uh, to implement the um, uh, microphysics into the harm code? Uh, I needed to really uh, go inside the code and uh, look at the inversion schemes between the primitives and conserved variables in harm because harm is a conservative scheme um, and advances uh, the, 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 um, the quantities such as uh, total energy or the commoving density. Why uh, we have in the EOS uh, um, uh, computation, we have a rest mass density and temperature. So, so we need to transform between those uh, variables at, at uh, each time step. And for that, uh, really, it is important which, um, uh, which routine you are taking. Um, we have to take this UTOPRIM 5D because it's, it's uh, much more accurate. Um, so uh, people familiar with the code already, already know which is the one because there, are, there is 2D and, and others, but only this 5D work. Um, the sound speed is important, so you have to, to consider um, relativistic formula from, uh, I, I took from Ibanez, I know that Scott took uh, another one, um, but uh, still the, the one that was in the default version was not, was not good. Uh, so I have the code uh, for the um, equation of state based on this beta equilibrium. Uh, it, that they are routines in Fortran 90 uh, that are implemented here into the harm um, with um, um, special just 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 into the make file and um, they are implemented um, so in such a way that we predefined that the tables over a range of temperatures and density they are spanning at least eight orders of magnitude for each uh, just to um, cover all the floors of, of the of the code and um, let let the um, code evolve uh, from the initial conditions and initially, we filled these uh, tables with the zeros. During the dynamical evolution, the equation of state routines are called and um, the functions uh, are called only uh, whenever needed. And then the tables are filled with these uh, values um, of the pressure uh, and the neutrino cooling rate uh, and so on as a function of um, density and temperature. Uh, and uh, of course, we have to, to do some interpolation because of, of the surrounding uh, values are needed for this interpolation. We store them in a cache, and this cache uh, is filled all around the one of the cell. There are um, four by four uh, other cells, and uh, this is distributed in parallel uh, way so that the code is using the generic Linux uh, property, the pthread. So it's, the, it's doing this. Um, interpolation in, in parallel way to be a little bit faster. The method used here is given by Akima, uh, spline interpolation. Then uh, simply um, uh, using newton raphson method, we interpolate between the harm primitive variables and the Earth's um, grid parameter uh, values. Uh, so, so this is done um, uh, not so, not so um, very difficult way. Two minutes, please. Sorry, do I have to finish? In a few minutes. A few minutes. Okay, yeah, I try to be fast. So we read the YE value and neutrino cooling at every grid point. Um, the code is available to, to free, for free to use. Uh, and what I want to say, uh, finally, this is this is last point here. Um, we also implemented the tracer particles in the code. Uh, the code is in principle fully three-dimensional. It's only uh, that uh, I have to use uh, actually two-dimensional simulation because of limitations of the hardware that I have. This is the hardware um, and um, well, this is a cluster of the Warsaw University um, Center for Computational Modeling. You can um, think it is large, but there are a um, lot of people who want to use it. So um, yeah, I, I restricted my models last year only to two-dimensional um, setups. And the motivation, of course, to, to publish some work about this was the discovery of the GW1708 kilonova. So I don't want to repeat what was said before. 
uh, about this, uh, just um, uh, to, to show the image. This is optical image uh, on the right here of this kilonova, and this is the kilonova light curve on the left. So you see these different components, red and blue. And it is supposed that the dynamical ejecta from the mergers are supposed to be responsible from um, uh, the time scale of about one week to, to produce this kilonova. But also, uh, it is uh, thought that subsequent accretion can provide bluer emission. And um, if it is not absorbed by this uh, dynamical ejecta from the merger, it can be revealed uh, later on with time. And, and it was discussed also by uh, Daniel Siegel yesterday, this, uh, this point. Mm -hmm. So, okay, uh, I, I will just uh, skip this. Uh, this is just uh, um, uh, artistic vision, yes. Uh, that we have this kilonova explosion, we have this signal about a couple of weeks after uh, the gamma ray burst and the gravitational wave observation, but then we have also re remnants of this um, traveling through the interstellar medium and reaching the solar system. Actually, um, the elements that, that are reaching us are not only gold and um, platinum to, to produce the jewelries, but also um, heaviest uh, uh, isotopes, uh, for instance, uranium, uh, it can also be produced in, in such an event. And here is the photo that I took um, visiting the old uh, uranium mine in Poland. Now it's a museum there. So, uh, so you can see only a model of the, of the uranium bomb um, that is now, uh, fortunately, not in use. Okay, and, and about the tracers, this is the, the, the image, the, the figure which uh, visualizes these tracers, uh, and they are um, distributed uniformly in the rest mass density in the torus. We update the positions of these tracers according to their um, uh, new velocity components, and they follow the wind outflow. The wind is magnetized, as you see here on the right plot, this is the magnetic field distribution in the wind. We use the post-processing with Skynet. I will not talk about Skynet because um, uh, uh, it was a talk before about this. So this is the, the result, electron fraction distributions um, in the, uh, the, ma the mass uh, beams. Yes, on the left plot, on the, on the middle plot, there is a velocity. Uh, distribution um, of this uh, ejecta that we produce in the wind and trace uh, with the nuclear synthesis uh, code. These are the results uh, showing the abundances as a function of mass number. So you see the red line is a model, the blue dots uh, is a, a solar abundance pattern, and you see the peaks uh, of the R process are being reproduced. So this is a Can summary of my talk. I hope I'm not too long. <laughs> so I, I just leave you with the summary. Uh, basically, the, the result um, for, for science is that the wind outflows uh, that we have here are having velocities of 0, 1, 0, 2 um, of the speed of light, and the broad range of electron fraction is produced. This is Ye in the range of 0, 1 up to 0, 4. And this we can envisage would uh, help to explain the multiple components of the kilonova light curves. As, to the, as for the mass of the post-merger <laughs> mm, these and, and, and these outflows, they are quite small, between 2 and 17 percent of the initial disk mass. But all of this depends on the, on the parameters and is hard to constrain. So now I want to just say thank you and wait for your questions. All right. Does anyone have questions? I'll just ask, um, how different are your results from people who have done similar calculations? Um, how different? Well, I, I think uh, quantitative difference are, are here present, of course. Uh, for instance, the total mass um, loss from the, from the from this ejecta is kind of small, as I said. I, I, I think people could have uh, higher masses of the uh, of the outflows. Um, so this is one point. As for the electron fraction, I think this is the broad range that, that, uh, that we have. I know that um, 
Uh, Rodrigo Fernandez was computing such, such similar um, models and, and he has, um, uh, I think, larger electron fraction values uh, on, on, this, um, on these figures that he showed. So quantitative difference, of course, are, 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 are here because of the setup, because of the limitations of this code and um, yeah, all the technical, um, how to say, um, imperfections. Of course, it could be could be great to to um, implement the three D um, computation first of all because it is two D and also for the neutrino transport is is the the, the, the biggest challenge. All right. Are there any more questions? Ah, Francois. Uh, yeah, I might have missed this turn to talk, but. Uh... So this is a 2D simulation. How long are you? Uh, how long are you simulating it? Is, is it the same kind of length as uh, as Rodrigo's simulations uh, for comparison of the to this uh, How long in the terms of the dynamical time? Yes, this is twenty thousand m. I simulate. Twenty thousand. Yeah. So it's long. I, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Computation <laughs> time: two weeks on on this supercomputer. Yeah, yeah, just to get an idea of uh, yeah. <laughs> comparison to your estimations. Thanks. Okay, well, I see no one else with a hand up. So maybe it's try time to try our luck with Phil's internet connection once again. Phil, are you ready to go? All right, so yeah, I will stop.